Hello everybody, time for new shave. Start with this Minto, chocolate mint. Uh, <coughs> Minto is a uh, Finnish licorice uh, shot uh, and uh, you mix that with um, um, chocolate uh, drink, a uh, mix of chocolate drink. <laughs> and you get approximately the same taste like this. So it's chocolate with mint uh, taste. Really nice. It's an alcoholic beverage. Uh, 4% volume percent. Not strong. Small bottle. Small canvas. Tastes really good actually. And now it's time to see how uh, two days ago or something. Uh, time for the shave. Has some issues there. So I hope I don't get too irritated there. Yeah, you see me honing to be erasers. Two last videos. First video I talked about it, but about angles and how it could see you know, on vintage razor when you buy them with cracks and a lot of issues. Sometimes they're really nice, sometimes they're really bad. But if you just think what to do, you often can manage to fix those issues and get a straight razor that works really nice. <coughs> I'm not a professional owner at all. This is what I do and it seems to be working for me. Uh, if there's another technique, of course, everyone can do it different. <laughs> I'm going to use this uh, Eric Anton Barry for a razor. Change these colors, uh, the plastic colors, but I think it looks pretty. See if that works on the right side and take the other razor to the left side. Uh, I think this is a quarter hole eraser. Or a small forward racer, but I think forward racers work just great. Uh, just go check it. Uh, it's uh, I have to be a quarter hollow. No issues so far. Feels like it's cutting really nice. I'm really gentle there. <laughs> like that. And then take the other. And this is a German razor from Solingen. There's an eagle and says 110. I know you can't see, but I'm going to show you. And on the other side it says Gerd Kurt. Korte. Gerd Korte of Solingen. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. That, uh, this is a hollow drive razor. Actually really pretty on, on the spine, here I can see the spine work. Uh, I think it's a beautiful razor, looks really great. Um, almost 5.8. Uh, uh, as you can hear, it sings. I forgot this part with other razor, it doesn't matter. Seems to be cutting nice this too. And this is has a little bit of smile to it, so it cuts a little different, uh, not much, but just a little. And I like when there is a little bit smile on a blade. Somehow it feels smoother when it cuts. It's got that guillotine motion. Uh, when you do a guillotine stroke, you do it like this. And if there's a smile to it, it's a little bit of guillotine strokes in some parts of the blade at least. And it seems that, that it cuts really nice. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm using a, a Wiccan Soap Russianator Descent. This banger, really, really awesome. Um, I like that scent really, really much. And matching that with the Pinard 
original, the best thing. <laughs> but I'm not going to use Pinot original. I'm going to use Nivea Moisturizing Bar because after the shave I'm going to eat dinner and then smoke a cigar. I have a bit cigar here. Uh, Macadona Maduro. This cigar is going to be in my mouth <laughs> after the dinner. And I'm uh, going to take uh, some... Uh, drink i don't know yet what rum cola maybe and so i'm just enjoying the cigar and and enjoying the evening then after that i'm going to take a hot sauna also i think i need some moisture to my skin And even told you that I wanted to work with my car. I want. I don't want to. I have to do it because uh, the left front spring is broken. Uh, they found that it was broken when we was at the control. Each year we, here in Sweden, we have the control of our cars. And they check the car. Is, is everything was okay and so on. And they found that the spring was broken. So now that's a lot of work for me. <laughs> I have loosened the tire, of course jacked up the car and so on, but loosened the tires and loosened some bolts and so on and still there is some bolts so still stuck in there and have to buy bought some uh, bits to it. Uh, I didn't have those parts. So, uh, so I have been buying that thing and Hopefully tomorrow I can uh, unscrew everything. It's a big job. You have to unscrew the tires and all the brake pads and so on and loosen that up and uh, loosen the whole fucking thing from the car. And then you have to open the hood and loose it from the hood, inside the hood, and take out the whole spring package, whatever you call it. And uh, when that's done, then you have to have some spring tools that clamps the spring. And when that's done, on the top, you loosen, uh, what do you call it? Lager in Sweden, uh, bearing you have up there, and when that's loosened, take that apart. Uh, and when that's finished, then you have to just take out the broken spring like this, and there's the shock absorber, everything is in there, and put the new spring in and do the reverse thing. Hoping that the uh, what I call it lager shit I forgot the name again uh, the bearings and everything is okay. If not, I have to buy some new bearings and put there. If they are okay, I can mount that back again. And screw all the nuts and bolts and then loosen the spring so it goes to the place. When that's done, then go back under the car, take a whole fucking spring package and everything, and just shock absorbers and everything, put it up, screw it under uh, under the hood, and put everything on place with bolts and nuts and everything. And it's actually a big job, but I have done that before in other cars, so I have some clue how to do it. But this is a Ford Scott uh, new car. I haven't yet done it with those cars. I there is some. small issues how these parts fit it's usually it's the same thing but you have maybe have some different order to do it i have done it with volvos old volvos and all subs and there's usually no issues it's newer car so everything seems to be losing very easy 
Usually when you do those things on old cars, you crack some bolts on them and so on. And it's a pain on the ass to fix them afterwards. The most annoying thing is I don't have any garage. It's still not windy here, but cold or windy. Some outside doing it, it's not fun. <laughs> but you have to do it. I can send it away to a car dealer to fix that, but then cost money. I can tell my wife I can do it. So I think I'm going to be finished with that this weekend. Hopefully tomorrow. The most tricky thing, in my opinion, is to get these butts and bolts and bolts and nuts and whatever you say <laughs> loosen, and everything is loosened. To get put them back again is no issue. It's how to dismount everything. If that's the right word, I don't know, dismount. Or is dismount the whole from the right word? I don't know. You know. I hope you understand what I mean. I have some mechanical skills too, so I've been playing around with cars for many years. I'm not as a professional, absolutely not, but my own cars. Changing stuff and things and so on. Repair things. It's fun when you're done. It's not fun when you do it anymore, <laughs> in my opinion. But you have to do it sometimes. You save some money, actually. A lot of money, in my opinion. The shave went really nice. I'm going to do a quick rinse and I'll be back. Yeah, and uh, what can I say? In my opinion, both edges were great. Ah, that I'm going to find almost BBS. There's no issue here and not here. Maybe some things there. Maybe, maybe something there. Uh, really nice, feels really great. Really fun when you manage to correct some edges and get a nice edge, edge that works. I had a lot of issue with that uh, air counter bay racer because there was a lot of cracks and a lot of things. That's the usually thing you can find when, not usually, often on the uh, on vintage races when you buy them from auctions and so on. Uh, can be a lot of rust on them and so on, so you have to unpin them and fix the blade, then pin it again, and finally you can do the hole. And I used the DMT plate on the Erie Canton Bay because there was so much to correct. And that's the cut I did several uh, videos ago. <laughs> uh, so this was a little bit more work with this one. Uh, as you can see, a lot of cracks and other things you have to correct and fix that and then hone up. And this one was just to take a 208,000 grit stone and then do the progression. And I get a nice, uh, question, I'm gonna uh, answer it in the video. Uh, a person asked me, why do you uh, why do you uh, kill the edge on the stones? Uh, let's say, if, easier to tell it this one. If I use that on the DMT plate and I check with the tomato and it's cutting and I kill the edge, uh, and then put it on a 5000 grit stone uh, and the edge is start to emerge and I get a nice edge working, shaking with the tomato then I'm 100% sure it's from the 8, 000, uh, 5000 grit stone and not from the DMT plate if I don't kill the edge 
I'm not 100% sure if it's from the DMT plate or it's from the 5000 grit stone. The same thing is when I go from the 5000 grit stone to the 8000 grit stone. I kill the edge on the 5000 grit stone, check with the tomato, start cutting, and when I do the honing on the 8000 grit stone and emerge that edge again, I'm 100% sure that edge is from the 8000 grit stone. So that's the only reason why I kill this edge between stones and to check it's okay from that stone. So I don't use, if I would would not kill the edge, I don't know if this edge was from the DMT plate or the 5000 grit stone or the 8000 grit stone. But I'm not 100% sure it's from the 8000 grit stone because I killed the edge from the 5000. You hope you understand what I'm trying to explain here. That's the reason why I killed the edge and check with the tomato. The only thing I don't, only after the 8000 grit stone, I don't kill that edge. Because I'm using the G knot, and uh, I can see uh, on the edge it's hitting all the way, you know, different way. So that's the easiest way for me to know I'm, uh, that I'm honing uh, with one stone. I know that edge is merged from that stone I'm honing with, and not from the previous stone. Hope you understand that. Uh, <laughs> difficult to explain sometimes, but. I hope I was clear enough and I hope you enjoyed these videos. Uh, I can do more honing videos probably in the future, but have your questions, just ask me questions. I can help if I can. Uh, I'm not a professional honer or nothing else, but I think it's fun. I do the best I can. I, usually I get nice edges. Sometimes I have to rehome them again and see the correct, correct things. But sometimes there's a lot of issues with on a blade. You have to maybe do two homes before you fix that issue. Cheers. So I hope you enjoyed this shave and the other videos. Uh, three videos in a day, sorry about that, but I think it was fun to do it. Have a great, great uh, Saturday evening. I'm gonna take a smoke with a cigar, eating, and then the hot sauna. Bye, Slow. Bye-bye.